Hi everyone, it's time for another update on my Korean. Um, I've been pretty good in general, I think. I did take a, a small break uh, from st language studying, but then I came back after a couple weeks. So in general, I think I've done okay for studying Korean. Uh, not great. Uh, I'm still struggling to find the best way to self-study this language in a way that I can become conversational as soon as possible. Um, I, I put my, my in the past, uh, I put, so I, I really believe in uh, tadoku or extensive reading to improve your language abilities, but um, I don't think it's the fastest way to get conversational. And so it's kind of a roundabout way. And with a language like Korean, which is slow to learn, it seems like it's even slower to become conversational, although in, eventually I'm sure I would get there just doing extensive reading. Um, yeah, so uh, what am I doing? Well, I tried to find a online, I gotta turn the air conditioner off. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, my air conditioner is extremely loud. If I'm making any any kind of recording, I really need to turn off. So it's uh, it's over 90 degrees outside. Uh, over, I don't know what that Celsius is, maybe 30 degrees, over 30. It's hot outside, even though it's um, it's not even June yet, although really close. Um, yeah, so that air conditioner will be back on as soon as I finish this video, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so um, I think that um, the best way to get conversational as soon as possible is to learn the, uh, the, the grammar that you absolutely need to um, say what you need to say. And for, so the basic grammar, and then I'm not sure what, if that like, technically that might include some intermediate grammar, but, um, but yeah, some basic grammar, uh, some core vocabulary, and then you really need to start practicing. And then of course, the, I think the best way to do that would be in a class. And I can't, I can't find that here. So I went on italki again. I've had my experiences with italki. Um, it has, the, the teacher really need, I need a teacher that pushes to use, to speak Korean to me. Um, of course, I'm going to struggle to use Korean and I'll fall back on um, English or Japanese if they speak Japanese instead. Um, but I need the, the teacher to uh, actually uh, um, to, to kind of bring it back to Korean. And it's, 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 you're, you wouldn't believe these italki tutors how hard it is to find tutors that genuinely want to speak their native language to, uh, to, other, to foreigners. Uh, I think the majority of them want to use uh, italki as an opportunity to, to practice their foreign languages and to get paid for it, uh, is how it seems. And so consequently, um, using your foreign language to teach someone else is a bit of a skill. And if you're always relying on using English to explain stuff to uh, foreigners but and not Korean, then suddenly you've got to use Korean. Well, you're going to fumble a bit. And that takes some practice. And of course, it depends on how basic the other person, uh, their language is, but it takes practice. And, and uh, so when I, so a lot of these, these teachers, if you try to get them to use only Korean, they're going to fumble and that, that doesn't work so well. So that's, I had a teacher I kind of liked, but she didn't use Korean. If she used Korean, ah, she just, she seemed like it didn't seem natural for her. It seemed like she wanted to be using um, a different language. Yeah. Anyway, so I found a tutor. Um, she's uh, Korean, living in Australia. She's older. I don't know how old, but older than me. So um, uh, probably over 50. Um, and surprisingly, her English doesn't seem that great, but her Japanese is pretty good. So that's, I think that's good uh, because I I can use Japanese and I kind of tend to use Japanese by mistake when I'm speaking Korean. Anyway, so uh, I, I and I, I found that at, that with the teachers that don't know any Japanese. If I speak Japanese by mistake, <laughs> um, they get, at first they're like a little bit tolerant, but eventually, but it keeps happening because unfortunately it's just the way my brain works and it's going to, it's going to be a slow process to uh, become fluent in Korean. <laughs> so they lose patience and uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of think it's a good thing if the teacher um, does speak some Japanese so they don't get upset and because that's never good. Uh, she doesn't get upset. Um, she does bring it back to Korean. Most of the time she will use some Japanese because um, she speaks Japanese very well and I can understand Japanese, but all in all, uh, she's been, I've been, I'm pretty happy with her. Unfortunately, she was sick yesterday when we were supposed to have her lesson. Um, 
I don't know if that's because teaching Paul makes her sick <laughs> or if she was really sick. I think she, because I, I, I have a feeling that older teachers, they're more experienced uh, teachers that it's more, it really is that she's just, she was sick and instead of uh, just like, Oh gosh, I don't want to teach Korean today, which of course makes me feel a little bad, but I've had, and I've had that with other students, uh, other teachers, or maybe they were just burning out as a, as a teacher, not necessarily me per se, but all the students. Um, but it still doesn't make me feel good as a student. Yeah. Um, I don't depend on her lessons. I guess if I, for some, some, times I was taking uh, I talking lessons I felt I was really kind of looking forward to the lessons and so when they canceled it was a big letdown and anyway for this one it's I'm like okay it does and it was the first time she canceled too so but we'll see um if she cancels next time then oh boy <laughs> I hope it doesn't happen I'm gonna give her a week to get better though um so uh current so uh, my my current strategy uh Ah, I'm struggling a bit because I want to find my stride and I just haven't found my stride except the best closest time I found my stride was when I went to Seoul, Korea last fall. And even when I came back and had Corona, I still had this motivation and this uh, sense that uh, Korean, I, I kind of talk about this, the young, my brain unconsciously kind of recognized that Korean was important and that, uh, you know, pay attention to the details, remember a little more. And I felt like it just felt better. But that's that's worn off, um, as I knew it would. <laughs> so um, it's still uh, maybe it still helped a little bit that I went there. But um, at this point, I could definitely use another trip to Korea to refresh that. Unfortunately, and probably not going to happen. Um, I read on the link forums from another learner just talking about their own language studies and how they've um, uh, every, uh, online at least the circles that I. Uh, uh, participate in everyone says immerse 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 and just do any content whatever you find interesting interesting trumps all and this guy just said well I, which he, he'd been doing the interesting trumps all um attitude for a while but then he said look i, I tried some material that was more my level and that is and he can feel now he can feel that his improvement coming and um and so i'm trying that too uh, i figured i'd copy that too and i got some graded readers this one is the first one off Amazon. This one's for beginners. Um, considering I haven't used any, I mean, I technically, I don't think I'm, I'm a beginner and I do think this is a technically below my level. That's just technically, uh, it's a lot of Korean text. There is vocabulary in there. I don't know, or don't know very well. And I, I I'm pretty happy with it, even though uh, in terms of the level, I'm pretty happy with it. It is really boring though. <laughs> so that's my problem with graded readers. And I got this one too. I have some more on my Kindle, but I kind of wanted to get um, some paper books somehow. I thought that might be good. Um, I've made a little progress with those, not a whole lot. And I've tried also um, switching my Anki to be, I, I eliminated some of the decks and I, and I cut back. Um, I'm trying to study, th I decided as of yesterday, I'm uh, trying to study three languages at the same time. Um, Korean, Japanese, and Spanish. And part of that's because on Hello Talk, because I am a VIP member, I have the, I got the lifetime membership years ago, I can select three languages. And that's why I actually chose to get the uh, VIP. It was like, because I, at the time I was like, well, I don't want to pick just one. And that was my whole point of, picking, paying for the VIP membership. It was a little, it was cheaper back then, but not cheap either. It was like, like 60 or 80 bucks. I forget exactly. Now it's up at 200. Um, I know that because this Japanese girl I was in a voice room with, uh, somebody, I don't know. She's, she seems kind of cute, but I think she's one of her friends, boyfriends, or I don't know, um, what the relationship is, but somebody gifted her a lifetime membership. And she said it cost two hundred dollars. <laughs> anyway, must be nice being a girl, just getting gifts from guys. Guys just can't help themselves; they just want to spend money on women. Anyway, um, yeah. So um, I was on Hello Talk uh, the other day, and one of the um, Spanish um, from the Dominican Republic, a Spanish speaker, messaged me to do language exchange, and I was like. 
I mean, I don't want to be rude, but I, my, my Spanish is so um, out of practice and it wasn't, I've never really been conversational. I'm like, I don't feel ready. And when vice versa, I know that I when, when I want to uh, speak Japanese to Japanese people. I'm like, um, I know that they probably, if they're a lot of them are beginners, they probably don't feel ready. I get that. And of course I'm still, in, I'd like to find people to chat with. Some of them are totally brave though. And they go for it. And it's, uh, I, I really, uh, that really impresses me. Um, I decided to go for it. So we had a, we did two 10 minute conversations, mostly in English. Um, I told her up front, I, look, my you know, Spanish is rusty and it was never great. Um, but at the same time, I didn't want to do all English. So uh, she did speak some Spanish to me. She's, um, if she were a language teacher, I think it would be a better exchange because she could definitely speak. We could definitely have a conversation in Spanish. My, um, I would judge my level to, although rusty to still be like a low B1, um, someone who would be taking that. Maybe I can, I couldn't pass a B1 test, but someone who would be studying in the B1 class for, uh, you know, to, to studying the B1 material at about that level. Um, and so obviously that's not the conversation. True conversational is B2, uh, for most of the time. Um, and uh, I'm not there with Spanish for sure. And so, but we, it, it was okay. And I had, and she liked anime. That kind of surprised me. And she's, uh, she's, I kind of know this about Spanish speakers, but she's uh, friendly, outgoing. I'm sure not everybody like is like that, but culturally they're more outgoing than um, say um, Korea or Japan or Japanese culture. And um, yeah, she was very outgoing and friendly. So that was fun. And she liked anime and she's like, okay, I'll just let me quiz you on Japanese. And she started sp saying some Japanese words she picked out from anime. Uh, for some reason she knew Kokoro. I'm like, how do you know Kokoro? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And then she knew uh, Nani and that uh, reminded me of a, a interesting small story from my coworker at work. So anyway, so it was a good conversation. Went well, and it made me want to uh, brush up Spanish to do more language exchanges with Spanish speakers. And I think unlike um, Japanese or Korean, um, they're, well, not so much unlike, but even more so, um, there are a ton of uh, Spanish speakers who would love to do uh, language exchanges in English with English speakers. So it's a big opportunity. Um, and also the bigger thing is the time zone, you know, South America, it's like this time zone so much closer, um, where I'm living, it's not exact. I mean, I could go South of the border. There's part of Mexico that is, um, in the same time zone, but the majority of them are still going to be more like East coast. So there's still a few hours ahead, but it's not nothing like the 16 hour time change for Japan, Korea. It's much more doable. So, yeah. Um, what I mean, so I, 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 some of the advice I've seen online uh, for studying multiple languages and uh, people that like Anki, I used to hate on. I used to hate rote memorization, but since studying Japanese, it's become a habit. So it's one of my part of my routine. Um, they say just to do it for one language, but um, I set it up for actually all three. I'm using um, Japanese, the uh, Core Six K Ten K deck, to brush up. Um, there's a lot, of, although my Jap, I'm very happy, uh, comfortable speaking Japanese. They're in that 6K, 10K deck. There's a lot of words I, um, I'm rusty on. I would say I forgot, or you know, maybe some of them I didn't learn. And the example sentences are good, so the audio is fantastic. So I'm using that. Um, for Korea, uh, for Korean, I'm using the um, Evita's uh, grammar sentence deck, um, Evita's vocabulary, and. That's it for Korean. Actually, I had my own Korean deck, but I found that um, for if I want to become conversational, I could intentionally make find vocabulary that I know that I will want to use in a conversation, but that requires lots of work and discipline. Uh, instead, I'm relying on Invita, who's done a lot of work with those decks instead. Um, but if I just kind of sentence mine, even if I'm using, I was thinking of using like like sentence mining from stuff like this. But even if I do that, I still think it's I, I think it's still less efficient than if I use a pre-made deck um, as a beginner or low intermediate. 
Um, you just, uh, if you sent his mind in the wild and, and you get vocabulary, that's probably useful for like, for example, I love reading fantasy books and these, this vocabulary that I'm finding is useful for reading fantasy books, but not for having conversations. So it's still useful to me, but right now my bigger goal, as much as I would love to read fantasy, um, is to become conversational. Uh, that would be, I think that's number one. Kind of flip flop though. It's kind of like conversation so hard. It'd be so much easier just to um, study Korean so that I could enjoy uh, consuming content in Korean and not worry about being conversational. You know, speaking. Just do that later. But later could be just so many years down the road. And and when you get on Hello Talk or any of these these apps, this is actually you know, there's people to talk to, and it's fun. I do it in Japanese and that's what keeps bringing, that's what's bringing me back to Japanese. If I go into one of these chat rooms in Japanese, it's like, I can understand so much, not everything uh, that I have stuff to learn uh, for sure, but so much. And it's like, I can participate in conversations with natives among natives. Now um, that is, that definitely pushes me uh, a lot though um, because I can't understand everything. And so if the conversation switches a bit and I lose track, I have to you know really focus to kind of pick up, um, you know, what the conversation is about after I miss a few sentences or something. So that's a little stressful, but it's great fun. And uh, of course, when, um, when you can actually speak the language, then you really feel like you're making a, 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 you know, a real connection with uh, other people um, across the world. That's great. That's great. That's, uh, that's what I love about Japanese. I haven't been able to do that with German, at least on Hello Talk. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be there that many German speakers. Only one person messaged me, this one German speaker, and I was slow to message him back, and he got so impatient. He just <laughs> and he just kind of got rude. I'm like, okay, I'm not replying to you um, because German isn't a language I'm actually studying right now. It's a language I used to study. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, so that's where I'm at. Uh, basically, we're doing um, – oh, and I'm trying to incorporate – Oh, and my Anki decks, I made them all audio. I think that it's hard. It's a step, it's a le- if you have the, if you're reading it, if the Anki cards are, you know, text reading Korean, then that's the easiest way. And Anki or any kind of form of studying can be hard. Um, and if you're going to do it every day, you want to make sure you don't make it too hard so that you don't quit. So we'll see how this goes. But I truly believe that um, even more so than production cards where you look at English or a picture and try to remember the Korean or do like a, um, a close delete where you basically fill in the blank kind of a flashcard. I think that the listening, the audio flashcards are apps are the, are the strongest, uh, for assuming they're not too difficult. <laughs> it's the strongest for using Anki, uh, for improving. Cause, uh, for me, for anyone, unless you're deaf language is, you know, it's sound, it's auditory and you don't, because you, when, as a learner, you focus, you kind of focus on the visual text version of the language so much getting uh, that you, you don't, it, it, it's hard. Um, it's hard to really get the language uh, from re- reading alone. And I didn't really realize that when I learned German back in the day, I did two things. I did lots of reading, but I did lots of listening um, to news bras, uh, or to just, just German uh, broadcasts online. And I did the German, the, I did the listening, of course, when I couldn't read. And I, I knew that for sure when I did the reading, that was what improved my vocabulary. So I just assumed reading was the most important thing. But I think I disregarded how important all that listening I did was. And so that's uh, uh, trying to balance it. It's hard to balance activities. Uh, I'm not very disciplined. <laughs> so... I can tend to just do one activity and kind of just keep doing that. So that could be Anki or it could be reading. I guess it could be listening, but it somehow it never seems to turn out to be listening for Korean because I struggle so hard with that. And it's, you can't like use a dictionary to make it more comprehensible. So, okay. Uh, that is an extremely long update. Um, sometimes I kind of think of like with these updates, I may want to comment on the videos that I see on YouTube from other people. Um, but I haven't, nothing really is coming to mind so much. Uh, well, Steve Kaufman did a video not too long ago, kind of talking about uh, Link and the the uh, the, uh, the mini stories that he has, and he he of course he's always pushed those, but he, in the, he just made a video somewhat recently, just kind of really pushing it. It's kind of like most of his videos are like, here's some great language advice. No, oh, by the way, you can use Link to practice this as well. But just by the way, this time he really focused on the uh, 
the mini stories and why he thinks they're so wonderful. Um, I've tried using the mini stories and I have a couple of, they, I think they're good. I do think they're good, but I think they're really, uh, the only, the, the, they're really good for, I, I think for a one level, um, because they, they kind of, um, and he'll, he'll say this in this, but they, they, they kind of, for each story, they say the same story. Like I think of like at least twice, maybe three times just using different, uh, pers- like uh, tenses or maybe a point of view, uh, which is good for practicing. So you get that grammar practice, but it, if you've kind of learned those simple tenses already, like I have for Korean, even though I'm not, I'm like B1, I'm not A1, I've, I don't need that practice. And so it's kind of, it's redundant. And so rereading the same story if three times, um, technically if I was going to go have a conversation in uh, Korean, like in a few days, it could be good. You know, it's going to drill stuff for me, but it could be useful and, but it's really boring. So I don't, I really think those mini stories are, are really, they really shine, I think for a one level. And on the other hand, a lot of people will say at length that, um, if you're a one level and you've never studied a foreign language that because you're getting thrown into the wild with link, um, you they don't hold your hand so much. Uh, a lot of people will probably struggle. And so they say using link is probably good after you've learned some basics already. So maybe a two, Hmm. I think a two, you might be too good for the mini stories. Maybe not though. Um, there's so much other content on there besides mini stories though. And you can bring your own content, which is what I like to do. Yeah. Um, that's it. Anyway, uh, if you have any comments on anything I've said, any advice you want to give to me, anything you're doing that you're finding useful, I would love to see it in the comments. Uh, Thank you so much for watching.